Welcome to another video. Let's do some functional equations again. I got this email all the way from Brazil. Maybe someday I'm going to travel to Brazil and meet some of the YouTube subscribers that I have there. They've been amazing. I got this and I felt, well, this is not a complicated one. I think I can do it. And now I think I'm going to do more functional equations because I will get more into it. The thing about functional equations is that you don't just learn it one day. You have to practice and practice. It becomes an art. And over time, you just, you just think of what to do. You try it. You get it. Sometimes you don't get it. Sometimes it takes you days. Sometimes you get it just like that. But because math, the world of math is a brutal one. If you make a mistake, the judgment is always extreme. So I try to avoid things that I'm not 100% sure about. But this one, I think I got this. Let's get into the video. So this is the problem we've got. It is the composition of f with itself will always give you x plus 1. So this might be hard for you to figure out until you know that this notation is the same thing as this. f of f of x is equal to x plus 1. You see, this makes things a lot easier. Now, see what I'm going to do? I'm going to rewrite this, move this here, and say x plus 1 is equal to f of f of x. Okay. Now, I'm going to take advantage of something that's very straightforward from the original question, which I have rewritten this way. You notice that when you compose f with f, what we have on the right hand side is the argument of the inner function. So you have x plus 1 is what's on the right hand side. After two f's, you get x plus 1. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to compose this with itself again, but I'm going to compose, I'm going to say f of x plus 1 is going to be f of what I have here, which is f of f of x. I hope you see that. So with what I have now, f of x plus 1 will be equal to, remember I said it is the argument of the second f, this x, that is that 1 is added to, that's on the right hand side. So this is f, the first function, the second function, this is the argument. I need to add 1 to this. So I can say that f of x plus 1 is equal to f of x plus 1. We're almost there. Remember that our mission is to find f of x in terms of x, like a polynomial or whatever function comes out of this. We don't want this to show up when we get f of x. So we're trying to get rid of this and just have f of x and anything else just in terms of x or any um, constants that might be involved or integers or any strange function. So what I'm going to do is do a bunch of nice substitutions and see if I can get rid of this guy somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one over to this side so that what I have will be f of x will be equal to f of x plus 1 minus 1. So that's what I have. Now, I'm going to plug in a bunch of stuff on this side. I think I can break this into two. I hope that's a good line. Okay, it's manageable. Let's plug in 1 here. What is f of 1? f of 1 is going to be equal to f of, this is going to be 2, minus 1. So, what about f of, if, we, if x is equal to 2, what about f of 2 is going to be f of 3, minus 1? A pattern is getting itself established. We go to f of 3 is going to be f of 4 minus 1. I can keep going until I get to f of x. This is going to be f of, um, this is going to be x plus 1 minus 1. Okay, I'm not including the first one. <laughs> okay, so let's just say this is what I'm working with. Now see what I can do. 
I can decide to add up everything here and see what happens. If I add up everything here, it's going to be f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3 plus tap, 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 f of x. And this is going to be equal to everything on the right hand side. I'm going to add up everything here. It's going to be f of 2 plus f of 3 plus f of 4 plus tap, tap, tap plus f of x plus 1 minus. Is it going to be minus 1? No, because. I left out all the minus ones. How many minus ones are we supposed to have on the right hand side? One, two, three, da, da, da. We keep counting until we get to x. So there are x minus ones. So minus one times x is just minus x. Now what you observe is if we move all of this to the left hand side, f of two will cancel f of two f of 3 is going to cancel f of 3. f of 4 will be canceled by... Everything here is going to be canceled. The only thing that will not be canceled is f of 1. So, clearly we know that f of 1 will, will survive if we move everything to this side. Will f of x survive? f of x will... not survive. Sadly, although I wanted f of x to survive because you see these numbers are increasing So before you get to f of x plus 1 you already have f of x So these two f of x's will cancel out the f of x is somewhere in the middle here So what you have left here is f of 1 will be equal to f of x plus 1 minus x Ah, that's nice. That means we can rewrite this so that we can say let t be equal to x plus 1 so that t minus 1 is equal to x. So we can go into this function and say that f of 1 will be equal to f of t minus x. What is x? t minus 1. So that f of 1 is equal to f of t minus t plus 1. And this is the guy we're looking for. f of t is going to be equal to, um, if we move everything here, it's going to be t plus f of 1 minus 1. But f of 1 is a number, minus 1. This is a constant. This is a constant. So f of t is equal to t plus c. So we have a linear function. Could it be what we're looking for? Yes, it is. I know it is. Now, f of t is t plus c. Is it possible to find the value of c, which is the constant? Now, in some other cases, you may not be able to find the c. You leave it in terms of c, but this one looks specific because it says it is x plus 1. So, let's try to see what happens if we compose this function with itself, what we're going to get. So, remember, we can, do, we can easily change this to f of x equals x plus c. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this now to x. It doesn't matter, okay? So, that's what we have. So, let's compose this with itself. We have f of f of x is going to be, remember, is going to be x plus 1, but when you compose this with itself, it means you're making this to replace x. So it's going to be f of x plus c. But f of x plus c is x plus c plus c. So this is equal to x plus c plus c. What is x plus c plus c? x plus 2c. So we've got Actually, let's use more space here. So from here I have, but f of f of x, remember, that's the thing, is x plus 1. x plus 
1 equals x plus 2c. That tells us that 1 is equal to 2c and c must be equal to 1 half. So, the function we're actually looking for is the one where you have x plus 1 half. So, our answer f of x equals x plus one half. That's it. If you compose this with itself, you're going to get x plus one, whatever the value of x is. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.